listening to Wanye's World, a new podcast on the Nation Network, presented by Oodle Noodle. Wanye's World, episode five? Four. 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 Yeah. W-W-4. That's cool. There's that hidden one we had to delete because of all the racism. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The Dutch have it coming, Rick. You'll see one day. We'll all settle our scores with the Dutch, and I'll be first in line. The whole episode just bleeped out. Yeah, it's like, boy, he hates Rotterdam. What an odd thing. Wasn't there an issue? Didn't the Austin Powers' dad hate the Dutch, too? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's so- right. <laughs> so is there a running story between the two of you guys? Like, what's the issue? I don't know about any issue with these guys. Oh, no, I actually love Amsterdam. Yeah, I just the feel like they're Dutch... really good at speed skating. And... Yeah. Yeah. Weirdly good. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful women. What's the hate? <laughs> Not here. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Well, I'll tell you what is to hate is a one four and one start to the local hockey team. I'm sure people listening to this show are surprised to find out the others are off to a cold start. If you've been living in some sort of coma. If you've been in, I don't know, death row segregation in a prison, perhaps you live somewhere remote and AM frequencies can't reach you in your cave. I wish. The Oilers are in deep, deep shit to not, start six. Not deep, deep. Not, not two deeps. No? They're in shit right now. No deeps, just single shit? Just single shit right okay, now. Okay, talk me down, Rick. Go. It's only one. Uh, how am I this? But yeah, I mean, talk to me at the end of a game, and I'm probably not saying the same things right now. <laughs> but they're only one four and one last game was... Outside of our own blue line, I think they looked a lot better, so I have confidence in that. It's personal accountability in our own end right now. If everybody holds themselves accountable in our own end. Um, I think we'll be okay. And then the goaltending will be fine. Once, once, the, once the five guys in front of them are playing fine in their own end, the goaltending is going to be just fine. Everything will start going over again. The next thing you know, it'll be 10-4-1 and one in no time. I think the, the goaltending has been actually – much better than the stats have said. I know that, 100%. that whole yeah. like high opportunity chance save percentage isn't fantastic, but still either way, I mean, you can't be giving up all those high profile chances. And like that, that I believe it was the Eric's neck goal where he just came right Backed out, out on his own, but everybody's going, Oh, where's Nugent Hopkins? Where's, where's nurse? Cody Cece's on the other post just playing with himself. I don't know who was around. <laughs> there. He, he's just he he lets him right there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, he ultimately had a partner who he could have dealt with. And he's just like, mm, you know what? You do your thing. But it's just guys making individual mistakes. An individual mistake plus an individual mistake equals a goal against. And it's happening all the time and it's everywhere. And, it, and I was ha- kind of happy seeing them say that kind of stuff. This is not a system issue. That's not the issue right now. I mean, maybe it is one day when they all start playing the way they're supposed to individually. But as of right now, it's everybody needs to look in the, in the mirror to their own selves and take care of your own end first. And if you do that, then they'll be fucking fine. Now, Brett, you're wearing a Jack Campbell AHL Texas Stars jersey, which I yeah. respect to no end. I'm but can we trust a man who loves Jack Campbell so much he supports him <laughs> at the AHL level? <laughs> Hey, listen, Can we trust last, him at no, his word? That last game, he was everywhere until his two big mistakes. Yeah, yeah. And our only win of the year was when Jack Campbell had 42 saves. Can we trust yeah. a man <laughs> who loves Jack Campbell so much? He special ordered a jersey from the Texas Stars website. And I must have been like, damn, a Jack. Maybe it's his auntie ordering a jersey. <laughs> Hold on. Is, have you been, is this a new purchase or have you been rolling with this since? I've Brett had, has the weirdest jersey. Yeah, the I have a signed it. Ilya Buzgalov Oilers jersey. Um, That's sick. Yeah. That's dope. Um, the brand. Is. I got this, I think it was 2018, 2017. So he's still, he was fresh with the Leafs, if not with. Uh, oh, okay. So it's not so. like you just bought it. You no, was, no. It is what it I is whenever you got it. I was honestly surprised it fit as well as it did. Did he not play for, did he not play with, did Gazdick not play on that team? I believe so. I yes, believe, yes. yeah, right? Because yeah, there did. was a preseason game where Gazdick fought probably smack. <laughs> a preseason game and then um i think they threw him on waivers and yeah. next thing you know he's an oiler yeah i guess my question about jack campbell's ahl jersey is is he fucked and should we shoot him into the sun <laughs> what do you think because i'm starting to worry that maybe something not working in his head or his eyes or something he's been good. no i think he's yeah. been, like he i think he made a good few it. saves in the second period but he gave it all back in the third play but boy the guys in front of him that aren't i don't want to hear no out. five goals against third period the goalie played no. great ahl no, jersey played, all-star affiliate. he didn't play great but he played average and a little above average but you can't allow I think these being guys too nice but because no. he's not allowing anybody to get a high danger chance. 
The guys yeah. in front of him are. And it's yeah. called a high danger chance. I don't believe in those stats. I believe in three stats. Goals. I don't believe in assists. <laughs> <laughs> I don't don't get me fucking started about assists. I'm really interested to see that next two are then hitting from behind penalties <laughs> and how many too many men's can you get in one game? And if the answer is more in one game you than the Kings count. got last year, whole season, we're on fire. And if anybody and I, you, we are in deep you don't shit. Believe in assists? Not first or seconds. How? What? It's bullshit. How? how? Uh, how? We should the play. we should only record goals. Basketball. Nope, just goals. I don't want to hear any bullshit about how you helped or you did something. <laughs> Kenny, I'm kidding. I, I, <laughs> I was just talk, I was talking shit. It's Wanya's world. <laughs> just make it up. You don't have to have no facts. Just say whatever pops into your head. We'll be fine. <laughs> I am concerned. I, like, I don't know if that's the hill you die on or not. No, 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 no. Assists are real. But he made a lot of really good saves to keep that game respectable, to keep the game close. And then the team collapsed in front of him, and he wasn't able to bury them out. But who's able to go to the bottom of the ocean and grab eight dudes like uh, a barrel of monkeys and bring them all back up again? What are yeah. you describing? Yeah, you, yeah, I don't know, but that's just what I'm saying. Do you know what barrel of monkeys I know is? What oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know game. the game, but I just yeah. don't understand how we connected that to Jack the Campbell. Team, the team is collapsing in front of him, and for him to prop him up, he has to go – Pull him back up. Like he's got to let him worry about his own job. Let's keep the shots to outside. He's not rocket science here. Yeah. A young Wanya final. used to love Bill Ranford, as he should. He yeah. should still. And when we traded for Cujo, who I also enjoyed because he had a dog mask, I was so <laughs> mad. I wrote a letter to Glenn Sather, like threatening his life, basically <laughs> being like, "I don't know who you think you are, bringing Cujo with him. We got perfectly good Bill Ranford, and I know they're not both going to be in the same team. I wish I could write myself a letter now to intercept that letter going to Glenn Sather, be like, Wanya, in the future we got these guys you've never even heard of, <laughs> and our goaltending sucks. <laughs> like you, it's like the interstellar me. Yeah, you'd like, be like, happy oh. to have Bill Ranford in 2023, current day, making saves like these wonky ass goalies. We got everybody to make nine million dollars in the future and shit holy mackerel do you, do you remember uh oh, who's the one goalie we had jonas gustafson for a little while matthew Some, biron matthew uh, biron or garon 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 i, yeah, I have biron. a matthew garon jersey too of course you do yeah do you I specialize can... in obscure oilers yeah, jerseys yeah, yeah, literally does. Do. that's yeah. so interesting Linus oh, omar jersey too one after, person that can make yeah. me like i have a andrew ferentz at home and he's making me look that. bad yeah. andrew ferentz lives with you no, I have a jersey. <laughs> oh, I see. I didn't understand. Uh, if no, I'm not honey. mistaken, though, like, I have always I he lived across the street from me when I was in junior high or something. Like that. Really? Oh. Yeah. He shaved a hand into his head in like grade nine. That <laughs> is a <laughs> captain's move. Why? Yeah. What was? Hold on. Was Wait. Close? What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's just click. He shaved a hand print into his head. Yeah. Oh, well, I misheard. Around, well, technically, he shaved around. So when you took it away, the mohawk he had, if you will, was the shape of a hand. Oh my god! And, you, and people thought he was going to be a captain. This, yeah, he would have been. He was definitely one of the better players in Sherd Park at the time. He was probably when in, in midget triple A. Yeah, probably that something like that. Yeah. My friend Martin got the word "yeah boy" shaved in the back of his head when we were in grade six, and we were never the same after that. Friendship. Yeah, that's wise. what I'm saying. Like, if you're in junior high doing that shit, like that defines you. He came to school. We were like, "When the hell is a yeah boy?" boy? On the back yeah, of your head? That was 1989. How yeah, boy. Yeah, boy, a thing. Yeah, boy. Exactly. Like it was that. Flavor Flav related. <laughs> He's like, my hairdresser thought it'd be a cool move. And I was like, <laughs> you should fire your hairdresser. It's no Andrew Farron's handprint. <laughs> Listen, hairstyles back then were, were they were dope, man. I had, you had the racing stripes on the side of your head, oh, but yeah. the Mohawk yeah. racing stripes all, all the time. <laughs> Some little bit of flow out of the back of the helmet. I got a couple of really good like uh, hockey cards or hockey picture days where you know get a little bit of flow going on long hair oh yeah you get look. the white you get the white nike skates Oof, Ooh, love those i was never so fast oh, oh, so oh, fast oh, you, you can't keep up to this no. guy me out there i was never allowed to have long hair growing up so that's why i think now is that what's going on up here yes, right now absolutely this is a rebellion every single time my mom sees it thanks like, you could get this cut. You could, she finds some like TikTok and she goes, like, It's oh, made of steel like wool, mother. It cannot be cut. <laughs> yeah. All day on Kaylin's Thanksgiving and Christmas, he's just sitting there with a pick, like just combing the hair a bit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, mom, can you say, Dad, what do you guys think about this? That was, was exactly it. Putting there in her face. Yeah. Oh, I dig oh, it. I can yeah. get behind My this. dad would always tell me, Grow it if you got it, because he's bald. So he'd be oh, like, I, I wish. Go ahead. Go <laughs> give it. Give her hell, son. 
my dad's older too. Like uh, my mother was 40 when uh, I was born and he was about, well, he was 34 then, but so, somewhere around there. But now he's, he has like a bald patch and losing his hair and everything. And it is, oh my God. That's only 18 months ago. Wow. No. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's 2021. Oh my God. I was running them oh, things. Yeah. No Long hair. Oh yeah. All the way down to no my shoulders. No, oh, it's a good look. When he was living in the manor, wouldn't yeah, leave the manor look, for a while. Wouldn't leave the manor. Had a kid, wasn't allowed to leave. Yeah. So I was like, "Here, we're going on a journey." The, you got the Leon mullet. Yeah, it's cool. And then I was like, "I'm gonna get this immortalized in my license, so I'll never forget." That's the way to you do it. You can get that on your passport. It lasts longer. Oh, that's a good call. Oh, Thank you. Ten years. My passport has me wearing a JC shirt jersey. Look at you. That's not a goalie for the Oilers. <laughs> a linebacker for the Elks. Yeah. What? Yeah. How many jerseys do you have? Uh, over a hundred and thirty. You've got to be kidding what? me! Yeah, yeah, somewhere around a hundred thirty. Yeah, it's my like nineteen. All of a sudden, means nothing. I'm leaving, going home. It's baseball. Yeah. It, it it includes baseball, hockey, soccer, football, uh, basketball. A lot of jerseys. Well done. Yeah, yeah I don't know if I have one hundred thirty pieces of clothing. <laughs> That's that's the other thing too. Once I moved in with my girlfriend, it's like a quarter. Of, you have to rent a second place just <laughs> yeah. to keep yourself. It's borderline. It's we have two closets, and one is in our room. The other one's like outside, like the coat closet, just like J Lo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so and it's it's just mostly my stuff. I always wow. said that if I ever won the lottery and got like a nice house, I would have a jersey closet. Yes, that just, that's it would be cool. Dope, dope. Like just couldn't be a closet. You gotta you gotta like put those room. on the wall. You gotta like, put a frame on my. I can always for for some reason I can see in my head like some dude's got like a crazy Maple Leafs one and it's just yeah. like yeah. jerseys, I'm jersey, 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 weird picture, jersey, jersey. Yeah. And it's just that's um, yeah. what I do. That's for what sure. we had yeah. too. We had uh, signed mostly Oilers stuff. So we had signed Rolison Smith. I had an All Star Smith, um, and then we had a signed Wayne Gretzky, Mark Messier, Gordie Howe, Sidney Crosby. And then we, Eddie George did a commercial with my uncle, and he, he signed it. Oh, oh, there's, there's a little, there's a little, there's a little there hint for you kids at home. Yeah, let's go he find this him. commercial on YouTube. Yeah. He, uh, so he signed a jersey and made it out to Brent, which is my dad. Yeah. So uh, we had the guy who boxed the jersey just put like an extra T and just made it. Brent. Sick. Yeah, and then signed Joey Votto as well. That's so cool. Yeah, we like jerseys in That's our house. Eddie George, I like the Eddie George one, man. Oh, I love it. I the All Star Smith. Yeah, That's the dope. when he was ninety three too, because wow. of Yannick Perot. Yeah. At the All Star game, you have a yeah. Smith ninety three. Yeah. yeah, That's yeah, sick. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know why Yannick we're all in this. Perot get the the jersey over him. Sorry. How does Yannick? Yeah, get that's the what over I was. Him? I think a lot years in the league, probably not a whole fucking lot. Yeah. You could think when they retired, like if you had to ask me right now, start the career. I know when Smitty did, no idea when Pro did. Yeah. If I had to guess who ended last, I would say Pro ended last. Ended his career last? Yeah. Really? Like Smitty would have finished his first. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yannick Perot, though, I think he was close to being out of the league already. Because he was <laughs> borderline and just, I think he was one of those, it was one of those situations or it was like the last year where you could have like not every team had a player at the all-star game. What do you think was up with Smitty when he was making that video for Leon? Why was he on the set of a Western? <laughs> we, was he, was he shooting he Yellowstone season six? What well, isn't he in Nashville? We guess, but it's Everything not the old is. West. He's not riding around a cowboy hat. He got a horse hitched to a post behind him. Every talking single, about every Leon. single bar there feels like you're in oil city. Yeah. It's but boys, Smitty was a country. cowboy in that video. Like I half expected Alec Baldwin to pop out and shoot him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Western movie. I know, that, yeah, I know that reference. Yeah, that's I what I'm talking think, about. I don't think you should get in trouble. That's for not, that I think it's way. fine. Who's our sponsor? The Rust movie. It was oh an shit! Yeah, it was an accident. It was malpractice. Yeah. Oh my god. But seriously, I, I was so confused when I saw that. I'm like, why? It's Cowboy Smitty. Is he? Is it Halloween? What? It's retirement smitty that's what happens is his wife made him just be a cowboy maybe, for the rest he's, of his out life? There, maybe he's out there combing combing the horses these are his dreams hey if you couldn't be an oiler well i'd be a fireman for 10 years i'd be a <laughs> cowboy for five years and then i suppose some sort of parade master for three you got to find something to do outside of retirement she's sitting on millions millions yeah you can only smitty count. deserved every dollar he ever made only count yeah. as many times yeah <laughs> i can't do no that too he was like the last of our guys who left because of money 
but then came back. Smitty? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, no, 100% came back. But, I mean, I mean, I know we want to talk about this, too. Like, uh, obviously, the first one, or close to anyways, is going up in the Ring of Honor today, right? Doug yeah. White was kind of like the first guy that, I mean, we he, oh, who was he traded for? Was it McTavish? Yeah, he came in with McTavish. Yeah, because he went on for the coach, right? And Tekanen. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, next thing you know, he's an oiler. That, what, that was a down the hallway trade, too, wasn't it? Yeah, and then he got hurt. So he came to Edmonton. I remember I was like playing mini sticks with myself in my basement. And then like he got hurt. And I was like, that new guy just got hurt. What a piece of shit. Back to mini sticks. Right? <laughs> and then they came back next year and he was awesome. Mini sticks, a bouncy ball. And Solo a con- too. And a concrete wall. You play goal. Firing it against the, the wall because there wasn't Twitter for another 23 years. That's all we had to do, Kennedy. Just shooting rubber ball, the mini stick yeah, against the wall. The listening the to Rod Phillips. On you, on I got, little, legs, I got like little cousins. We had probably the same thing. Oh, I was right. like 23. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I wasn't. I was like, you want to go play? No, I was like, now? Grade eight, yes. Yeah, I do. A actually. mini six tournament in HQ. Can Why we have not? a mini six room? Just oh, so, like, yeah. Lay off steam. It's just, cool. Yeah. The hallway yeah. upstairs. We've been talking about like beer fridges and. If you're talking yeah. about lay, yeah. laying off shit. steam, you need a real shooty. Like mini sticks yeah. will almost be more frustrating. You need a <laughs> net, a full size net. You need some Teflon, right, for the shooting surface. <laughs> yeah. And you just fire them away. I'd like that. I'll put walls in that. <laughs> yeah, or just strap walls to it. Yeah, there we He's go. a shooter tutor. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to explain to Kennedy earlier, like the why Doug Wade was so important, right? And like the yeah. one year he got 104 points. Yeah, he got the 100 points. The first guy since the 90s. Guys. People, people in the NHL weren't getting 100 points. No. Oh, wow. Right? And then hand, for one of a handful of that season. For him to lay down 104 points with garbage for wingers like he had billy g see it's like interesting to me because i'm growing up in the like the Conor mcdavid era right like i only started watching hockey a few years ago and it's yeah, yeah but like, what we're getting now we're getting now great. is all the top end players yeah mm-hmm. we grew up with a team of everybody was like a third line player mm-hmm. our third i think our, we had the best third line ever when you had marchand you had bucky and you had greer that thing was in, incredible and then the second line well but so guys were like third line being paid $10 million like then, like in the yeah. mid 90s and yeah. shit, like Keith Kachuk and Paul Korea. These guys are making $10 million a year back on the are like, what you want? 1.2 million? No, we can't do more than 1.185. And then you lose somebody over 15 grand. And then the Ducks would pay Paul Korea $12 million. You're like, we're well, fucked. Bobby Holy to the Rangers for $9 million. Yeah. Wow. Five years, nine times five is like Something a forty-five like, yeah, million dollar deal. And then they got in trouble for the Kovalchuk one. So you wonder why? Well, yeah, it's really weird, right? Because I mean, if I was a hockey player, I'd be very, very pissed off. In what sense? Because of our the salaries other have gone pretty much fucking nowhere. Oh, I see. Yeah, and I mean, it go back to like the mid nineties when that uh, Sports Illustrated article came out about the NHL on the rise and basketballs on the decline and blah blah blah. And now, if you just play in the in basketball now, if you just like, well, you're you're a thirteenth fucking player or something like that you get an eight million dollar contract like it, that's that's yeah. their league minimum is eight million no i don't know if it is but no but like these if guys you're are making starting five ridiculous yeah ridiculous money well we were even talking about before uh onar before is uh the james harden thing where he was signed for or is haggling for like 33 million dollars and could you imagine making 33 million dollars in a year just to pout on the bench and have yeah pout on the bench has to be traded three times <laughs> yeah. stay uh, at has home. load management yeah i need to ma- i get a yeah load management at home right now why because i'm tired we played one game well, <laughs> it yeah. was a long game i have uh, business at my strip club I yeah do. you know who was ready to play all the games master p when he tried out for toronto Damn straight. and they didn't even let him play no they said no Master P. You yeah, don't know the rapper? Master yeah. P yeah. damn near rappers. made the Raptors. What? Yeah, he would, I think it was the Charlotte Hornets too. He's a little, he's yeah, a little but the Raptors, like yeah. right when they first got Vince Carter, yeah. they brought in Master P during training camp. He damn near made the team, man. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. Imagine having a team of uh, like Vince Carter. Who who else was T-Mac. on that T-Mac. team? T-Mac. That's what I'm thinking. And Master P. Yeah, that's hilarious. He could have dropped a Raptors song. <laughs> yeah. Oh. He'd own the Raptors by now. Yeah, probably. Like, I know every, like, everyone's like this guy, the, this rapper is the big, but doesn't uh, doesn't Master P have like the most money amongst like all rappers? Yeah, he's a really rich I think rapper. he owns the, like, the most expensive house in the US. He, had, I remember his MTV Cribs, he had the most expensive, he's like, that's my aquarium in the roof of my bedroom. It's the most expensive aquarium in Louisiana. And you're like, number one in Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> Master P, you got it going on. But he damn near made the Raptors. There's another lesson yeah, about yeah, Doug really, Waite for you. Master I, P made the Raptors. I think his kid was really good, too, wasn't he? Lil Romeo? Yeah, well, he was so. in that basketball movie. Well, yeah. 
Which one? Of course. Uh, uh, like rappers. Mike. That's so funny. I was watching a Like Mike video yesterday. I think it's, isn't it Lil Romeo and Lil Bow Wow? Lil Bow Wow, yeah. yeah. Wasn't Lil Romeo in it too, though? Like or was it just Lil Bow Wow? No, I think they're both in it. But I saw um, also Jesse Plamons or Plemons from uh, Breaking Bad is also in that as well. You know, um, Todd, Todd from Breaking Bad. Oh, really? He is in Like Mike. He's like one of his buddies. You see the main character, but not the, like the Malcolm in the Middle dad guy? Yeah. Is yeah. the other guy, the shaved head dude? No, no, that's that's uh, Aaron something. He's uh, he's the one who comes in and like he's a part of like the, the white supremacist group. Uh, and then like kills that kid. I have not seen this movie. No. I'm realizing as he's, a TV show. as he's describing. No, oh, I thought we were still talking about like a no, child's no, basketball down. movie. <laughs> I'm like no, white no, supremacist. Yeah. No, no, we're still talking about like, like <laughs> that's one um, hell of a basketball movie. Damn, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> no, it's uh, the the guy from uh, um, like Mike is the guy in Breaking Bad who like kills the kid on the motorbike Todd who helps with the uh, the. Uh, they're trying to heist on the train, and the kid comes by on the the bike, and then he just shoots him. Yes, and everything goes downhill. Yes, him. goes sour. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, I was watching a basketball <laughs> documentary the other day. Air Bud, Golden Receiver. I was gonna. Say. <laughs> And oh, I was like, call, wait, this wait, is wait, a crazy call, season of the NBA. I don't even remember a dog playing professional basketball. What do you call a golden receiver in the basketball movie? Uh, which was the Air Bud basketball movie? <laughs> Rick, I think it's just Air Bud. The entire statement was made in jest. <laughs> I honestly didn't think Alec Baldwin shot at Smitty either. That, too, was made in jest. Wait. <laughs> shot it right in the you know where <laughs> if you're on a set and you're given a gun i would assume it is a prop bullet a thousand yeah. percent okay yeah like well, i'm fairly like, certain it's not up to me to make sure this thing's good what do you do like shoot it into your hand like yeah. i told you it's fine <laughs> yeah. shit there's a hole i guess i was wrong this time <laughs> yeah. just Didn't, wrap it up how would he, a real bullet even get on that no set? It, again it's malpractice that is like it, it was the costume designer, whoever the hell. Because again, like you have to think about, like you said, why would the actor know? It, it, you you no, handed just, thousands of yeah, guns exactly in your career. They wanted so it, it was because give... of like the CGI or whatever. They were like, oh, it's not legit enough, so we're gonna use an actual gun. Like that sounds stupid. Yeah, well, go ahead and use an actual gun. Just don't use actual bullets. Yeah. Next yeah, time, there's... keep the actual bullet box away from the fake bullet box. <laughs> yeah, or they're having a meeting. A, a they're watching the dailies. That's an industry <laughs> term. And they're like, yes. this doesn't look good. How can we make this look more realistic? They're like, shooter. <laughs> we could just have Alec Baldwin <laughs> Actually, shoot that girl. Like, <laughs> Would yeah. we get in trouble? There's only one way to find out. This is Hollywood. We can do whatever we want. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Remember when we killed E.T.? <laughs> poor guy. That I was a documentary, got... too. But at the end, they just threw him out. It's ridiculous. Just threw him in the garbage. You Bye, alien. He's my friend. I remember seeing E.T. as a child and being like, holy fuck. One day, aliens are going to show up, and I'm going to need to decide if they're friend or foe. That's and I like me. went away and thought about it. was like, they'll be my friends. <laughs> That's I, me watching Men in Black. Yeah, it terrified me. I was like, "Oh God!" It aliens. terrified you? Yeah, I was scared because I was really? like, "Oh, that looks legit." Like anybody could be a yeah, anybody should be an, should an, be an alien. True. I think yeah. Men in Black is a lot more of a message than a movie than we prepare oh, to like deal with. I think. I know. It's What's so the good, message? Though. I love that probably a lot of that is real. All postmen oh. and it's are just sort of aliens. comically made less scary. But the idea that like comically, have you not seen that basketball player last night? Airbud Golden Wemby, Receiver, yeah. Yeah. baby. Wemby is not human. Yeah. Man, yeah. Wemby's got like an extra elbow worth of arm. <laughs> yeah. Like if you he cut like his arm off at the forearm level, he's not that out. scary. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's prosthetics over top. <laughs> yeah. Pop him off. He's got another hand there. He uh, during the last game of the preseason, he blocked this guy right in the key. Beautiful block. Yeah, the guy's shot was like four feet off his hand, <laughs> yeah. and Wemby just caught it. <laughs> yeah, and they go the other way. Guys, like, oh, look at that! Nice rotation. Nice rotation. There's a roof on this place. Yeah. Wemby just jumps and like his arm unfolds, then unfolds again, <laughs> then blocks the shot, then refolds and refolds up. They go back down. The I'm from way. France. Uh, OK, uh, Martian. Yeah. Yeah. They go back down the other way. And then again, this guy's like seven foot five and uh, they toss it back to him. He's like the trailer at the key, top of the key and he hits a three. I'm like, who is this guy? Yeah, he's just dropping threes like nothing. <laughs> yeah. What he, the hell? He's supposed he to be able to do that. He can stand outside the park <laughs> and he can just dunk it. Three point dunk. Yeah. What are players going to look like in another hundred years if the world's still together? Like ever in the NBA is 11 feet tall. They make $200 <laughs> million dollars a game. Literally it's monster jam. Yeah. That, that's all. As long as I'm allowed to, I'm still around to watch that. I'm, I'm down. 
It's from a hundred years from now. That's fine. I'm sure that we'd figure out. I always tennis. said I'm going to 132. So <laughs> I'm sure they could really? put you. Yeah. That's cool. That's, that's crazy, right? Yeah. They could probably. I, think I saw a thing on on Instagram a little while ago that said, you know, we give it another three or four years, people can live till they're 100. Work till they're 100. Work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then you'd be retired for 32. Like Kennedy years. just yeah. pukes behind the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah, he's already I done just want to be on an away. island in Greece. Somewhere. All you got to do is get know. two nuisance lawsuits. One you can lose, but one you got to win, and then you don't need to work again. <laughs> like when I sued Johnson & Johnson for the baby shampoo blinding me. Did it actually? No. Oh. Oh. What are you, the judge? <laughs> I told him what I'll tell you. <laughs> you can't prove anything, and I want my money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, a nuisance lawsuit would be sweet. I remember... Um, the guys who founded Cash Money Records, I saw an interview with them, and they're like, "Yeah, we got the money to um, start our record label because um, his brother got hit by a New Orleans city bus, and we got fifteen grand." Another guy just leaned in and goes, "Crime. We started it with crime." <laughs> <laughs> they're like trying to pretend he got hit by a bus, like nah, 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 nah. No. crime. We started it with crime. I was gonna say fifteen k from the city for getting ran over by. This a would have been a while ago, though. Yeah, Fair early nineties. Yeah. New Orleans doesn't have like <laughs> inflation, baby. Yeah, you know exactly. how Shook Knight got the money to start Death Row Records? Murder, probably. Shook down Vanilla Ice and basically... He hung him over a fucking balcony. And he signed really? over Ice yeah, Ice Baby and he made like $5 million and used the money to start Death Row. No way. Mm -hmm. Like That's hung over the balcony and not, not like... Not the first floor. No. And he was in the penthouse of the hotel in LA and had his own security team. And Shook showed up and his goons told them to stand down. And they're just like, after you, sir. Vanilla's on the 13th floor. <laughs> like, shit. And then he came in and dangled him over the edge. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, I, man, I can't. Seeing people all worried about what goes on in the world these days, like, we grew up in that stuff. Yeah, we were, we were there with Shug. Yeah. We were ready to <laughs> fuck Vanilla Ice up. I plead the fifth. Yep. <laughs> I was, I Those was are the days there. you could just scare a man into giving you five mil. Yeah, now yeah. everybody has phones. It's bullshit. Yeah, everybody's reporting everything to police. <laughs> Ring, camera. Like, you <laughs> grow up. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> Get a life. Yeah. Take your punishment like a man. Exactly. It would not be fun to be a professional athlete in 2023 versus 20 years ago. Well, why? Just because you, you make a lot of money. And yes, I understand that. But like the level of scrutiny, the level of you have to keep everything quiet. You can't go out. Mm -hmm. Everybody can videotape. You remember when Brittany tried to touch Wemby? Just touch him. And the security's <laughs> yeah. like, pow! Yeah. Right, and then they like tried to like take him to jail, and all he did was go for like sushi at Nobu, right? Yeah. Sorry. Well, yeah, but she like ran up behind him. I would have done the exact same. I may have done the exact same thing in the previous years. I don't know. You slap Britney Spears <laughs> if she comes running up to Leon like that. I well, if she was, yeah. she won't. <laughs> Wait a minute, you slap Kenny for talking to Britney no, Spears? No, she would slap her. Oh, I see. Yeah. Would you slap Britney Spears if she Talk threatened home. Leon? She Ran up to Leon the same way. Probably. Imagine Leon I'm dumped Leon. Celeste and got with Britney Spears. And then she started coming to Oiler <laughs> Games. We're all just like. <gasps> That's oh, our Taylor don't and Travis. Start this no, we had that again. with Mike Comrie and Hillary Duff. Exactly. We had our Taylor and Travis. We had the, we had the original. Oh. She was on fire. She was Lizzie McGuire. She is. I know. I love her. Why wouldn't you think that was a big deal for us then? Um, Probably because I was too young to. Oh, well, <laughs> truly, Mike Comrie and. I'm Lizzie like, McGuire aren't Comrie? that far off, Travis. Yeah, yeah, but the difference between Travis Kelsey and Mike Comrie is that Travis Kelsey yeah. is one of the best ever. To Com's okay. that reputation. Reputation. But Comrie was a very good oiler and Absolutely. a very good NHL player when he was yeah. dating Hillary Duff. But he was not. If it was a Connor McDavid dating Hillary Duff, <gasps> then we're talking like. No, level. I'm on Lauren's <laughs> side. <laughs> Dude. That's how much of an Oilers fan I am. If Connor and Lauren broke up, I would take Lauren's side of the relationship. <laughs> I'd be like, you know what? He Mom, was always very, he was very grumpy. I was looking at the photo of them the other day from Halloween when they were the yeah. Grinch and they had Lenny as the dog. With so the cute. Oh, yeah. I know. What, I wonder what they're going to be this year. I'm really curious. Who do? You, what do you think? Obviously, Taylor they're going Travis? as Taylor and Travis. Clearly, I was, I was thinking it'd still be Barbie and Ken. Ah, uh, yeah. But Ekholm did it first. Do you see Tyson Berry and his wife when has the Barry, yeah. Justin Bieber and um, Haley, uh, like the paparazzi pic, where she's all dressed up in the red uh, dress and he's uh, in Crocs? I know no, the, they I know dressed the up as that. I love that. Emma posted it on her story this this afternoon. It's so good. <laughs> Very it's, hilarious. He's so funny. I miss him. That'd be a good article for the nation. Would be the best Halloween costumes over the years. Oh, I'm on it. There's been some gooders. I'm now an article. I, I write articles. So I am now an article writer. Yeah. <laughs> Add it to the list of my job. All right. Okay. Well, that'd be a good article. I'd read it. Yeah. Top Oilers costumes. 
Remember when Lauren meant, made Connor go as you know who from yeah, politics that one year? <laughs> that oh, yeah. oh yeah. And we were all like, oh, okay, I guess it's a little bit weird. Then like four years later, you're like, boom, get it out of the league. What the fuck? <laughs> the most controversial thing he's ever done. Eh? Yeah. He's like, Lauren, I wanted to not go to the party. The next year they all went as the friends characters. Everybody was like, yeah. That was unbelievable. So That's Lauren too, man. That's why I, I like that her. Was Leon's idea, from what I heard. Really? It was Leon's idea. But he didn't get the couch and did. line up the shoots. No, and... but like he was probably like, we should all. Well, it's it. easy to just give ideas, Leon. Who the fuck's going to rent People the fountain in Glenora? Who puts it to, into place? I feel like Lauren tries really hard, man. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. I agree. And I think she did a great job yeah. with that. What does she do? She's an interior decorator? Interior Something designer. Like and yeah. designer. Like She has a firm on 124th her Street. Own firm. And they're starting to do consumer products, like furniture Kyle and stuff. Well, I think there should be like a connection between them and the Wanye Manor then. Okay. Okay. If I brought Lauren Kyle to Wanye Manor and said, what do you think? She'd say, majestic, not a stitch out of place and she'd leave I'd say, well, <laughs> sorry lauren i too have immaculate taste and a woman's touch <laughs> that's what i would say to her i think lauren kyle is cool i do too. yeah let's rewind back to doug wade who's also cool <laughs> because i want to talk about the eighth time he said his name today yeah. i love doug wade i, I used to have a doug wade hat and I'm i wore it everywhere lot. i have a doug wade 1996 ish era jersey that's cool that's cool that's cool yeah, stitched or a plastic yeah. No, 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 stitched. Rich guy. Real deal. Whew. I think that, that might, maybe my 16th birthday, something like that, maybe. What's the best jersey you have? Oh, shit. I don't know. That was, I mean, I've got a, a signed Connor from when he was allowed to sign things. Damn. Um, He's not allowed to sign things? He has two. Not really. He was, two yeah, you got to be a little more finicky about it now. Lauren won't let him? What's going on? No, like the people that's. <laughs> It's the upper throw up deck a lot of money. Oh, oh really? Deal. Yeah, I mean, to be, I think I could probably swindle that still, but um, yeah, yeah. Flex, no <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all right. Brag. Did you hear that part? Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I think there's that one. There's the Doug Way one. I've got a, a signed um, Grant Fear one that after X amount of years at work, I can't remember whatever that was for. I've got a bunch, though. My best jersey is here at work. It's my grade five Bill Ranford jersey, not stitched. Uh -huh. I wasn't a Rockefeller like you. It's <laughs> plastic letters. I think it's two tone. And I was like, baller, got a blue <laughs> and a gray or whatever it is. Uh, and then he autographed it. That's so cool. To Wanya, your friend, That's Bill Ranford. And I was like, what the fuck? Man, he was, he was fun to he watch. He wore two cups, Kennedy. Love that. One goalie cup and a player cup underneath. Because when he was in junior, wow. took a clapper to the you know what <laughs> and said never again. And he wore two cups thereafter. Smart, smart man. Oh. Yep. Oof. It, when you actually break down the physics of a goalie standing in front of 30 <laughs> to 40 shots a night, it's terrifying. Like, I've never seen a goalie shirtless. Darn it. But they must have just huge bruises during the season. Well, on their first shit. Goal, calm no. down. You've seen the things they wear right now. If you find little gaps, those hurt. But if I mean, Their gear if you're is going like, at 104 miles an hour, I get it. But a ninety, but only a 90, 92 er Come <laughs> soft, on, soft. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're they're very well taken care. Of. But you go back to the '80s ones. Go put those chest protectors on. Those have gaps everywhere. <laughs> those are baseball catchers. <laughs> yeah, barely. <laughs> I used to I used to play ball hockey goalie. I still play ball hockey, but I'm a defenseman now. I used to be a goalie. I and love playing that. Uh, it's yeah well my parents didn't really uh believe in getting uh real equipment for mm -hmm. me so i used street hockey pads um i used i wore shorts like just regular shorts oh and i wore a back catcher because i used to catch in baseball too like just a catcher's She's in the orange what the ball, hell is ball yeah uh, it sounds it, like the, the first 10 ball. minutes of a oh. mighty ducks movie and then they come to you and they're like no no don't worry we'll get you good equipment son you're a mighty duck now and then you come out in all matching goalie gear and you're unreal that was like the before part of the movie you just need Emilio to come help you yeah that's right you just need Emilio Estevez to drive a limousine into your practice and bring you to the sporting goods store afterwards but using that orange orange ball yeah oh i had with no was... like no thigh pads or whatever yeah dude yeah i'm surprised you still don't have marks oh that would hurt there's uh i always bruise and now when i play defense i just block shots yeah i love i, I, I would always block shots i was yeah. slow block shots oh yeah we played this team last week i blocked two shots uh in the first period and then immediately after uh the other team blocked two shots and both of them had to be helped off the floor i was like uh, pain's off. funny mm. yeah that kind of pain is funny
Yeah. They yelled them for like a four or five days. Yeah. That's weird, but it's yeah, kind of lost. Not funny. Yeah, Whittle bones. Funny. Little Whittle bones. <laughs> wow. That's harsh shit. <laughs> it's yeah, growing hardcore. up in the eighties, man. Yeah. Well, you knew a good goalie by how much he smoked. <laughs> That's all you needed to know. He said, like, look at that guy. He's calm as a bomb. Pucks in the other end. He's running a dart. Bill Ranford in that puck flip out of his glove. Onto yeah. the top. Onto the cheater. Yeah. To give to the ref. Yeah. That I that may have what got me. What made you like him? Other well, other than the fact he's an Oiler goaltender and blah, blah blah blah. But what elevated him from like just like an Oiler to being like 38 years later, he's still massive. Like it was that flair, that whatever. He was had. electric, man. Like he would stack the pads for oh, no buddy. reason. They'd be shooting a puck in from center and he'd stack the pads, yep. the most amazing <laughs> save. Like, God damn, Bill. We those, did not need to do that. He got those Vaughn pads yeah. on. Bill Ranford walks so Dom Nakashi can run. Damn right. Exactly. Yeah. But I never had any issues when Cujo came because there was. Billy was. Oh, you didn't write a letter to Glenn Sather threatening to beat him up with your ten-year-old fists, like I did. No, but now that you mention it, I do feel like I wrote something for the for Yari Curry to the Oilers. Yeah, and I don't know what, but that just I just have a small, small little uh, deja vu or something like that. Um, I wrote a handful of letters to the Oilers, and I would come to my mom, be like, "I have another one," and she'd be like, "Well, we'll go get the stamps out of the drawer." Like (laughs) before email, right? And I would do Glenn Sather, Edmonton (laughs) Oilers. I'd look up in the phone book what the address was, and I would send that shit off. And it was clearly in child's handwriting. Never would hear back. (laughs) I think my grandmother. Stamps. I love it. My grandmother, the one that. I talked about to you before yeah. about going to the movies and all that. She's, I love her, but I think she wrote a letter to Leon a couple of years ago with a picture of me and him and was like, you should tell her, you should text her or something. Like, <gasps> that. like get with you. And I'm like, <gasps> no. she dropped your digits in the fucking I number. Think so, in the card Cause she gave me like a piece of paper that had the letter on it. And I was like, you did not send a copy of this. You did not. <laughs> I was mortified. Sure she did. <laughs> mortified. Imagine it worked though. Me. Yeah. Her grandma's not afraid of nothing. Nothing. Yeah, She's my hero. I adore her, but she terrifies me in the best way. <laughs> You're like, Grandma, that's not what we do in 2023. No, what you do is you DM the guy 1,800 <laughs> yeah. times. You tag him in your story. Yeah. You show up at the bar. You, you Photoshop wait. your head onto <laughs> his. You yeah. avoid him as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. And then, hey, that's playing hard to get, baby. Yeah. <laughs> True. I look at him through the glass. I leave. <laughs> it's his I, birthday tomorrow. So. It oh. is? Yes. Oh. Of Scorpio course. Season. You know. How old is he? 27? He'll be 28. Mm-hmm. That makes me so fucking old. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when he was drafted, I was on a bus to summer camp. I was like, <laughs> oh, no. He was like, great what were you doing, Wanya? I was at Nation Headquarters <laughs> talking about the Oilers. What do you do now? Uh, different building? Okay, I could almost, I don't know, I could probably take you back to work and show you exactly where we were sitting that day, I think. Really? Yeah, I was at the probably. end of the bar. Where I remember when they drafted him. I was like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. Ah, who cares? Well, at least we didn't pick the guy who can't do a pull up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sam Bennett. We'll be uh, fine. Briz is our goalie. <laughs> he won't get arrested in Phoenix. That's what we were thinking at the time. Well, wasn't that Nikolai Kahabi? Ah, you're was, right. So Briz, I apologize. Yeah. Different Russian goalie that <laughs> fucked us. <laughs> My fault entirely. Also, Dude, your didn't fault. Didn't he go to that terrible, terrible jail? The outdoor jail. Yeah, yeah, where they True. serve like moldy bread. Yeah, man, because he blew his back. Cuts? Do you remember the story? He blew his Ooh. back out. Couldn't play anymore. He was driving like a billion down the in, in a for like in a lambo yeah, and then he like ridiculous. got out of a gull wing door lambo the blown out <laughs> back all wonky and they're like you're drunk and they took him to jail and then yeah they made like a point of him or made a yeah whatever and they put him in like the terror like yeah, i don't even think that jail is allowed anymore like just with today's whatever yeah, but he's russian he's like this is like there. at home but in the heat yeah, really tricky, yeah. <laughs> but it is hot like you're outdoors in the tent and there's no yeah and they're all wearing shit. like the same I think they, they were pink. pink yeah they had a yeah. pink outfit we yeah, are good weather fans eh? we <laughs> learn all about the arizona penal system <laughs> like mm, i'm gonna write a letter to that district court judge and tell him the fuck off too <laughs> well he was still around like something happened the last couple of years maybe four i don't know what the fuck but they brought up his name again. I was like, I know that guy. That guy's from the, the pink jumpsuit from way back when. The judge? Like yep. the mean judge? Yeah, the it would... I don't know if he's judge or like sheriff, sheriff. or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something. Joe you know something, the... right? Uh, perhaps. Like yeah, mean just... Joe or something. <laughs> yeah, look it up. But some... well, that's a football player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, well, I'm firing off his wonders now. <laughs> you guys know the name of the sheriff who arrested Nikolai Habibullin? If you look up Nikolai Habibullin arrested pink jumpsuit, I swear yeah, to God the sheriff is known for it. Being an ass. 
I guarantee he read it probably in the sun because I, I you like, probably read it to me and I was like, <laughs> yep, we're neither of us are going to forget this. I would have read it in the sun because I didn't like the journal because it was too big. But the sun was like, yeah, I like the sun. It's sure. easy to read. Anyways, yeah, that's where I would have read it because they had a big story about it because they started to putting them in this fucking jail or camp or whatever the hell it was. And then they're telling you about it and you're reading it and you're like, well, I agree with it because some of these people that are there are terrible people, but yeah. speeding? Well, and I, I probably a DUI too. I don't know yeah, if that was actually the case. Driving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think he was several orders of magnitude above the legal limit. <laughs> now like, that you mention, yeah, maybe a two or a three. He's got so much alcohol in his blood; it's gone solid. <laughs> it's not even liquid. That's how he saves the pot. Solid blood. <laughs> Just smells like vodka. <laughs> yeah. Those were the days. Every prospect failing. Yeah, they said it was a black Ferrari traveling northbound at a high rate of speed. The report reads uh, radar confirmed its speed at 60, 62, 66, and then 70 miles per hour in a 45 zone. I thought it was way more than that. That's miles. Yeah, that's miles. miles. Yeah, but it's only, it's not even double. 71 and a 45. You're closing. It's not even double. Well, you want him to speed more? Well, I was thinking he's going, yeah, he's in a Lambo going down the highway. I thought he was getting in like the Ferrari. Had, you, had he been oh, in the sorry, Lambo, he'd have yeah, been he going kind of fast. Yeah. That's as fast as a Ferrari could well, go. A, yeah, in I case mean, Lambo wants to give us anything for this, <laughs> it's, it's 70 miles take per four hour. Of them, please. 70 miles per hour is 112.6 kilometers an hour. 112, and then what's 45? Like 80? Yeah, probably. So he's going down the hen day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't tell me you haven't done that in your damn car. Not in his Ferrari, I didn't. <laughs> I'd have punched it. <laughs> That's the point. I just feel like, yeah, he was going a hell of a lot faster than that. But yeah, either way, he was still in that stupid ass jail. And yeah, I, yeah, it was scary. And this is why we don't have good goaltending. Oh, it's warm they milk. They get too. locked up. It was warm milk. Ew. Ew. Warm milk. Yeah, they, they served warm milk. I remember the bread was moldy and the sandwich meat was moldy and the milk was warm. That's not the baddest problem of that meal. It's the moldy bread. Yeah, you can eat mold. You yeah, can't? You, <laughs> warm. You can. Yeah. I promise you, the moldy milk is the worst part of it. Well, oh. You can close your eyes and get over the. You can just swallow the fucking bread and not really taste the mold. What? But you start drinking some moldy fucking warm milk. No, -uh, that ain't gonna go very well. No, just don't eat any of it. Yeah. I, One I time during the you know what demic, I was eating all these cherries in the night. And I was watching TV, and I was like, you know what? I don't think I like sure. cherries. What? This one's good. This one's gross. This one's good. This one's gross. Watching TV. This one's gross. Turn on the light. They are full mold. <laughs> and I would bought them from the store and hadn't noticed. And like any good cherry aficionado, I was eating them in the dark. <laughs> I will not eat cherries <laughs> oh, anymore. Shit. That was the end. It was I was eating like fuzz cherries. You know, you oh. have to get those out of the uh, like the little trailer down by uh, the, the golf course. Yeah, you oh, know, this is the them. middle of winter. We were all well, locked in our houses. I mean. That's the only time you can go get them. Yeah. Well, anyways, fresh BC cherries, the big cherry ones. guy, yeah. moldy or unmoldy. Yeah, well, it depends on the week. <laughs> Fur on moldy. Yeah, never tried the moldy ones yet, but <laughs> yeah. time for everything. <laughs> Nothing to write home about. Yeah. As an adult, too, sometimes I'll occasionally see bread, but then it has mold on it. But then I say no. I do that with cheese. Like cheese freaks me out when I see like anything that looks kind of like mold. I'm like, no. But like a yeah. cheese you know, you lover just will just cut that things. shit off. Yeah, yeah. You can't. First of all, there's cheeses out there that have mold on them. That's the whole point of it. Blue cheese. And then depending on how bad your bread is, just pinch it. No. no. Yeah. Where are you be living with all this moldy no. bread? Were you living you in the okay? French res like, like, like no, you can't just 1700? Were you in Les Miserables? <laughs> if you're about to eat and your hot dog bun has a little a speck of mold, pinch that thing off and keep no. going. No. Because oh, it's, yeah. it's spread. It's a, it's a well, mold. Well, double check. Definitely look at the rest of it. <laughs> you give it a no. once over. But yeah, no, you're Have fine. Have you heard of mold spores before? If you're yeah, watching so documentaries easy. and eating cherries in the dark, I highly recommend you turn the light on and eyeball each and every cherry before you eat it. Yes. See, and I, again, we grew up in the 80s. You My that biology fine. teacher threatened us with the super bug does, like, documentary when I was in grade 11, and yeah. that traumatized me. Oh, super bug. That was called COVID, wasn't it? Mm Oh, you want to talk about the super bug? Listen to this. When was it called something fasciitis? Planters? The, the plant, no, the flesh eating disease. Oh. oh, it came to Alberta when I was in like elementary school, 
and everybody's like, oh shit, the flesh eating disease. And then this kid in my class was like, I have the flesh eating disease. And we're like, no, you don't. And then he did. No, he had it. A guy in my elementary school, the there was like two cold cases cold. of flesh eating disease in 200 years. One guy got it. Doctors came and checked us. It was all very exciting. <laughs> but there was like two cases in 200 years. Some poor bastard got it. Then a kid I went to elementary school with like willed his way to getting it. It was like, <laughs> and then pow, it popped out his leg. <laughs> Boom, flesh eating disease. Oh, that's <laughs> My meningitis would be worried about when they're kids. Yeah. Meningitis. I remember that being a thing. Mom would be like, hey, check your, you're looking for dots or spots or something yeah. like that. You're all worried about it. I remember my buddy sat behind him in class. And when they like, you know, you're little, you're cutthroat. Little kids don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. they and say they're like, that guy's good. got the flashing disease. And we're all like, and then my buddy just started scratching his arm immediately. <laughs> and he was like looking at the empty desk right in front of him. We're all like, oh, it was scary as hell. <laughs> so anyways that's my story about the flesh eating disease <laughs> i got the swine flu you did yeah what'd that do to you uh it was puking heavy like it was coming out all ends what was that s1n1 or something like H- that h1n1, H1N1. Yeah, yeah whatever the hell it yeah. was yeah. it was yeah. it was that's a solid swine. week of just like fluids going in fluids going out i remember How- being terrified of that do you remember yeah. the other thing that's kind of like on the same wavelength do you remember the coney 20 yeah 12 thing like shadow coney that was yeah. crazy too. I remember being terrified that this man was going to show up at our junior high oh, and like guy, take yeah, us yeah. off hostage. Yeah, and, like, we watched this. that in religion class yeah. once. Yeah, then so did the guy like go crazy and they found him in, like the middle of the street, like lightsaber like, in his it underwear. Wasn't even real or something like that. I <laughs> Who think are you it was just like, about? No, yeah. the guy came up with the Coney thing, oh. like a mental breakdown. Yeah, and like took all his clothes off. I'm not even kidding. It was like running around in New York or something, and they're like, you know what? I don't think this guy solved the Coney thing. I'm pretty sure that was Martin Lawrence. No, no. He did a Martin Lawrence. Uh, <laughs> Again, let's Google this shit up. I'm not wrong. Wasn't um, wasn't that also around the time of bath salts too? So that was probably yeah, a couple of years later. Yeah, because they did a skit on SNL, and me and my dad still quote it. <laughs> they did a skit <laughs> about bath salts. On What's SNL? the quote you guys use? Yeah, <laughs> it, it was uh the actually they might do it again. It's the David S. Pumpkins thing with um Tom Hanks. Oh yeah, and then they had like it was like a fun house or whatever, and she they're shooting like things in the fun house and there's a girl that goes i'm high on bath salts and me and my dad still <laughs> quote that fucking skit <laughs> to this day we love us it was it was pretty funny like thinking at some of the preventatives that schools tried to run to us for for school because i went to a catholic school okay. I'm, I'm not religious but i went to a catholic school because my parents are and thinking back to some of the things in grade nine before we went into high school they picked a what they called a, a random group of ninth graders to go to like a, a preventative don't drink and drive type thing don't do drugs kids um but you could tell it wasn't random because you looked around and you're like all the cool kids are here exactly. <laughs> cool kid cool kid yeah. that's my friend i'm here i'm drunk right now he <laughs> <Yeah>. drove here <laughs> <laughs> and then at lunch we had to like it was, uh, they called it like, I forget what they called it, but you had to, you had s- glasses that were like blacked out so you could only kind of see your meal. You couldn't hear. So they gave you like different like things that you couldn't do to simulate being old. <laughs> yeah, to simulate <laughs> having a, an, no, no. Uh, an accident. Popsicle sticks on your fingers to simulate <laughs> yeah. arthritis. I remember doing this. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh, they oh, no, they just needed no. to like traumatize us to be like exactly. scare the living daylights out of you. We did the same thing. It was like yeah, but it was part of like the dare program. Yes, that did that's it. exactly what it yeah. was. Yeah. And, and they then did, they, they were like, Don't smoke, don't do any of this. Or you'll go blind you. and can't hear shit. Yeah. yeah. Like they literally put the fear of God in you. I don't know if that's no, true. No, no, that's and fine. then they it, so like the first part was just like a whole bunch of presentations, like don't drink and drive. This is what happens when you drink, this is what happens when you're you're like whatever. And then or when you have an accident. And then this, you had lunch, and then afterwards they had a whole bunch of, like people who like were in accidents because of it, driving under the influence or stuff like that to like talk to us. There was like four different people. Who oh had, like, my brain injuries. God, is that and, like, vulnerable? Tra- yeah, tra- like literally traumatized. Us. Yeah. I remember there was a some more one that they did with us about like online safety. Did you mm. get that one? Uh, we did, but that was because we had a scandal that one in our school. <laughs> yeah. What kind yeah. of scandal? Uh, somebody was sending photos. Oh, Someone yeah. get their old schnackle out and start sending <laughs> yeah. knock knock jokes around as I was going on. Um, there was a, a photo that was being sent around, and at one point it was somebody's Facebook profile picture. 
So it, oh, it, was, wow. it got Jesus. very public and everybody, everybody had to have the conversation. It was not good. I remember in grade nine when I was in uh, Catholic school, not religious, forced to go because I got kicked yeah. out of public school in grade no, two. No way. Neither no, here nor there. Rebellion. I just wouldn't apologize. I would so never, far. never apologize. Oh, That's what. Awesome. Yeah. But anyways, I had this born again virgin lady come give a speech and they tried to make us sign contracts that we wouldn't have sex. And all of us were like, <laughs> we're not having sex because we don't know how. Not because we signed a contract. Fuck this know. shit. <laughs> I'm not signing no contract. What am I? Did you imagine if you breached it? <laughs> oh, yeah. What, what are they going to do? A 9,000 year contract with the Lord. <laughs> hey, you're like, oh, I signed it with a blue pen. Now you're going to hell. <laughs> no, man, it was crazy. This lady came and talked. She's like, you don't have to be a virgin from the beginning. You could be born again. And we're like, oh, so what she's done, she went on had her damn fun. Yeah. And now she's here right. trying to tell me in grade four, yeah. I can't party? Hardly. Yeah. <laughs> no, no fucking chance. <laughs> Ah, uh, what they used to do when they didn't have camera phones, hey? They just bring <laughs> us in. I remember one time we had a hard of hearing athlete come in and make a like a speech. She she could speak, and then I knew how to clap in sign language, which is this. And they said they're like nobody make jokes during this assembly. Nobody clap during this assembly. You little shits don't make a noise. <laughs> and this lady went up to make a speech, and I went, <laughs> and they threw me out of assembly, Kennedy. <laughs> and I said, I am fucking cheering and sign language you assholes this is ableist yeah. but we didn't know what that word meant because it was the mid 90s <laughs> they, so they, like, making fun. they threw me out Enough with you. Oh, yeah i could just imagine them like being so nervous about one of these punk kids doing something and all they see is some one of the kids just stand up just tossing his hands in the air <laughs> i don't know if our school because we only had 99 kids at my school so we had a lot of free time on our hands to fuck shit up yeah and I don't know if it was like every school, but like I can remember sitting in assembly and all the teachers would be like around the outside of the room giving right. mean mugs to the kids. <laughs> I thought just you. No, no, I no, I did oh, lots yeah, of no, dumb they, shit. They stood on the, the shoulder to shoulder along the back of the gym. Staring at everyone. Yeah, uh, they were watching their own damn class to make sure you know, I know that one. I got to watch out that one. Those ones are probably fine, but keep an eye on that one. Yeah. And they're all doing the exact same thing. I tried to run for student union president in grade nine and to fuck with me, they wouldn't let my friends vote. Cause there wasn't a lot of kids at our school. So like eight votes, you could get president. Right. <laughs> so then I didn't get to be president. So then I ran in like a by-election for the uh, class representative. And then I got called up in front of the school cause I won. And then the principal who'd fucked with me, he put his hand out to shake my hand for being class you rep. Not shake. I gave him one of those <laughs> in front of the whole school. And they made me sit down and do it all again. And everyone had to clap a second time for me. That's I was like, so well, thank, thank you very you. much, everybody. <laughs> Woo. Smooth. See, our I the once best. I once got in trouble at a, a an assembly. So uh, one of our ninth grade teachers used to be in the in the army, I believe, but he like defused bombs and stuff like that. But he didn't anymore because whenever he would like touch you, he would have he would still had like he would have flashbacks and stuff. What the hell? And he would like put his arm on you and stuff, and his hand would be like shaking. And he was like, Ew. I had him like a first. shaky bomb technician that would cut wires on yeah. a bomb. Yeah, I think I think it came after. Oh, yeah. It, like it was, it was the it stress was, of it all. Yeah, exactly. Shit. Yeah. I, the first time I had him was in fifth grade and I knew he was like a ninth grade teacher at the time. So whenever I get in trouble, he's like, you should be teaching me. But then in uh, <laughs> in junior high, I we had an, uh, an assembly and right immediately after. Everybody was like standing up because you're sitting on the gym floor. And I just like it was back when phones were just coming into the schools. And I took a look at my phone to check the time. And all I feel is this dead cold hand on my shoulder. He's like, give it to me. Give it to me. What? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, your phone. Give me the phone. I was like, I was just checking the time. He's like, I don't care. And he like took my phone. And he's like, you can come with me and grab it. We went from the assemb the gym to his classroom, gets to the classroom, and then he gives me my phone. That, that was that was his punishment. Even though I wasn't in his class at all, he just he, I was late to my class then because I had to go and grab my phone from him in the opposite direction, just because I went and checked my time the time on my phone when nothing was going on in class. It was insane one time when i was in junior high i was walking past the lunchroom and i don't know what the fuck was asking me to do this but i just took an apple put it in the microwave for all nines and went back to class <laughs> 
You were that kid. I was like, I was like, this will fucking teach him. I'm also a student union representative at this time. I'm a member of the government doing this type of thing. Apple down, so there's no fingerprints on it. Forgot about it. (laughs) Forgot about it entirely. Like any good grade seven student or whatever I was doing, right? Three steps away, completely out of the mind. And like, and now fractions. And I'm like working my way through. And then I just remember seeing like a bunch of teachers running down the hallway, and then the fire alarm went off. And my brain's like, I wonder what would happen. Why would there be a fire? And then we all filed out past the st- like the lunchroom, and this microwave had like melted down <laughs> to a stump. And I remember just being like, something's wrong with me. I have no remorse. <laughs> and I just like looked over. And I was like, mm, this school has gone to shit. No, I just put it in the microwave on nines. I don't even know what my plan was. <laughs> Agent of chaos, I suppose. Increase of thoughts really won on that. Oh, one. they win. <laughs> When I was little, I didn't. I'd just be like, "That's the move." Boop, boop, you were boop, in seven. And, yeah, seven, eight, somewhere there. Didn't You're tell like anyone until today, so I'm 108 years old. I hope the statute limitation <laughs> on Apple microwaving isn't 30 years. Good well, times. There was a kid that once did that. That put uh, tin foil all into the microwave at my junior high. That was a whole. What does that do? Well, <laughs> explode like. Make did the microwave catch fire? It, the thing caught on fire, and we had to have a like a. Like the fire alarm went off, everything, everybody outside, and the kid got expelled. I'm pretty sure expelled. Yeah. Expelled? How they know it was him? Did he stick the, around? Because everybody, yeah. everybody was like, it was during lunch break. Watch he was it. in the you, foods room too. I remember. If you're gonna do stuff like that, you gotta do it. Can they brought everyone in the thought. to the gym, and they're like, "Who did this?" And one guy just went, <laughs> <laughs> just hands in the air. That guy. Pretty sure everybody's like this idiot over yeah. here because. Yeah, we I was on a short list of always being the prime suspect for most everything that happened. <laughs> I can tell by always. based on all these stories. It's fun, though. I was always friends with those kids because yeah. we were uh, – I remember I, I took band in junior high just because – so we had a band trip in ninth grade, so we went to band. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll learn how to play the euphonium. <laughs> and uh, what the fuck is band- euphonium? <laughs> it's, it's the baritone. So it's like the, the little brother of uh, the tuba. So it looks like a tuba, but it's like smaller. Oh, I, was... I played the baritone in grade seven. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so did I. <laughs> w, when, when your last name starts with a W and then you get to pick your instrument starting uh, alphabetically, not a lot of options by the time you have a W. Oh, yeah. See, I wanted to play the trumpet, but they said my mouth was too big, so they gave me the euphonium. <laughs> but uh, I remember, uh, so in uh, seventh grade, we had our, our, well, essentially in ninth grade, we had two teachers. And this story happens in ninth grade. So the one teacher took the, like, flutes and all the really nice sounding instruments out into a different room. And then all, like, the bassy type uh, instruments stayed with this one teacher. And I had to go to the washroom. The washroom was right across the, the hallway from the band room. Go to the bathroom. I'm coming back. And all I see is my teacher bull rushing out of the room. Like, he is pissed. He is mad. And I just go, I'm his father. <laughs> and all I see in the room is, like, his, his music stand is pushed right over. He threw his music stand. Everybody's like, quiet. Like, what is going on? And apparently, like, the, one of these kids was just fucking with him the entire time, just doing something stupid. And he finally just was like, fuck it, you guys don't care. Uh, I'm leaving. You, I, I'm not doing this to people who don't give a shit. And that was, like, what he said. He swore to the kids, everything like that. Awesome. And so, <laughs> I don't know why, but me and this girl, Myrna, we decided to stand up in the front of the class and started, like, teaching the <laughs> class. Someone's like, going to take over it. It's a true yeah. leader. <laughs> That is as a leadership. All right, we're gonna go to uh, page two of Pollywog's Cakewalk. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was not good, but then we came in. Got he came back in. We got just roasted by him and the other teacher too. Like it was not good. But we still went on. We chased out a teacher. I can't remember what grade it was or what subject or anything like that. But I know we chased out at least one. We had two te- two teachers the same class for one year. If Wanya's wow. world could turn into a podcast just bragging about bad shit we did when we were little, because I've <laughs> yeah. never talked about any of this, it would be fantastic. Because <laughs> yeah. I've got That's about eight too. seasons worth of shit to do. <laughs> it feels so much better over here right I now. I remember we had industrial arts at our school, and for some reason I was with the older kids. I think because I was really immature and couldn't like hang with kids my old age. Industrial so, arts like like IA, work, right? Like workshop. Yeah, yeah. cutting okay, yeah. and shit yeah, like yeah. that. And so I was like in with the older kid, and I was like, I gotta make a name for myself. So me and this kid during the <laughs> photography unit we all took photos and then we all laid in these like thin tubs of fluid the photos to develop and then we all left to go do something else me and this kid double backed and peed in all the trays (laughs) so no photos came out 
and they were like what's wrong and they like couldn't obviously like do the fluid analysis he would do in like fucking crime scene investigation and me and that kid were like we know why the photos didn't turn out we done peed at every tray you told me no we oh. took that shit to our grave i'm telling all my secrets oh, now man. these are all these are all in the vault that i've decided to open because we're telling stories on the pod it's called therapy we did a lot <laughs> yeah. of it's our cool. school was awesome, man. It was funny for that kind this of This was all in your like school of 99 people, or whatever? yeah. Our junior high had 99 That's kids, insane. so they yeah. couldn't <laughs> wheedle it down. Well, there was like yeah. only like yeah. four kids capable of independent thought, right? And so they're <laughs> yeah. just like, Well, that guy's did it, it's him again, right? The Apple microwaver, he's involved. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. It, like, what are like? I got suspended, I had to go to the library, and then I took all the mouse balls out of the mice. <laughs> No, that's what? classic. You have to, to watch that. then the kids for computers come in for an exam. And I'm just oh. like the badass kid who's in the library because he got suspended. Then to watch them realize none of the mice worked, but they didn't know why because it was the 90s and we didn't have IT support. <laughs> so then they all left and I just went and put all the balls back in and then yeah. <laughs> ipso facto computer problem. Was, you know what I'm saying? Was nobody watching you? There weren't oh. video cameras. They weren't invented yet. Yeah, but like a librarian maybe? Oh, she was the desk, working the Dewey Decimal, decimal yeah, System. She had books like to show. She's years old. She's not paying attention yeah. at all. No, it was good. <laughs> there was a lot of, you're on your own back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Grade 10, I learned when we went to the new school, they had a computer lab. They didn't know how to like not set the home pages to not pornography. So me and my buddies went in and set all the home pages and the teacher's like, ah, close the window. <laughs> Open it again. Ah, close the window. Okay. No more, no more computers today. We're all going outside. And we're like, yeah, cool. <laughs> Remember when you got class outside and it was like the coolest thing? That was ever. just like plan B was just like, let them run free in the field. Yeah, they'll they'll entertain them. themselves. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. We just stay out of trouble. Remember the milk program? You ever have yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Oh, the oh, year God, they I gave us all milk, magnifying all glasses. No, they gave us like a science kit. If you drank milk every day for like a hundred days, you got a, like oh. a science kit. Wow. But we just used the magnifying glasses to light numerous fires in the As yard. Yeah. yeah, so we'd like That's make huge piles of leaves, and then like twenty kids would sit there with their <laughs> magnifying glasses until these leaves would ignite in fire, and we would all book it strong because we drank milk. <laughs> right? We'd get away no problem with our thick calcium infused bones. See, our milk program was like you would pay like every month like ten bucks or whatever. Yeah. You'd get like you would go for lunch and they'd mark off they'd call so, your name so i would work it i would like oh, one of the yeah. kids but we were i was told by one of the older kids that because you're working you're allowed free milk yeah so we would take it all the time <laughs> didn't say anything to anybody so then when my brother's two years younger than me so i told him hey like when i worked it you were allowed to take milk my brother got suspended because no. he was stealing milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! And it was a whole thing, and I never told my mom to this day. But I told my brother he was allowed to steal milk. Oh my god! And he got full on suspended from school for a week. No, for way. theft. For, for theft. milk. For milk. Uh, what kind, a week? What kind and of milk? He was working like what? those little like you go yeah. to like Tim Hortons or whatever. Those, yeah, the small ones. Yeah. Did uh, see? We had chocolate milk. And and we had we had white and chocolate. You could oh, pick okay. or choose what you wanted that day. So you just prepaid for a fucking milk. Yeah. yeah. And they just and call then, your name. Oh, you go up and get a. They, go, they come to each class. Yeah. And yeah. then they would like. You know they, this? Have oh, hell list. no. Yeah. They'd have a list and they'd go like, uh, Brett. And you come up and you check your name. And you get a milk. Yeah. Yeah. Ours is. Ours is. We got milk was hot dog day. Oh, I remember on hot dog day one time I volunteered for that. Three dogs and a chocolate milk, please. And I came into the like the food studies room or whatever, and there was this huge cauldron of un like eaten hot dogs. And I remember I was like, I'm gonna eat as many of these as I can. I had like four or five of them, and I just barfed everywhere <laughs> and then just left the room. Yeah. Like bah! So I was like, I'm out, and I just left. It's and disgusting. Like, I don't want to be in this fuck. room. Hot dog day sucks. And then I went back to class, and everyone was like, ooh, hot dog day. And I was like, no. <laughs> and then the same teachers are like running down the hallway away from the staff room, and they're running to the bar room. <laughs> like, There's only one guy. It's that apple kid again. One yeah. kid could have done that this. apple kid again. Yeah. It's like having the meat sweats. Oh, yeah. I had the meat sweats one time from uh, root beer soaked um, brisket. And it was unbelievable. We when I, I then worked at the summer camp after going to the summer camp, and uh, none of the kids like brisket. They all like the pulled pork because it's the little baby version of brisket. <laughs> it was a rich kids camp. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like it was the one and only time because it was like our formal. It was like our big dinner that we we had, and so our our cook made brisket, and none of the kids liked it. So people, it was me and my buddy that would 
eat it all. And so all the other tables would be like, oh, well, we have brisket left. We're like, we'll take it. And so there we are just, and it's our formal, so we're all dressed up. And at the end of it, me and my buddy are just sitting there with our belts on. Like, oh. <laughs> and then we had to dance immediately after. So we have to get these kids ready. There's music pumping. and music Oh, yeah. You're an and, adult supervision in this situation. Yeah, 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 exactly. oh, yeah that's right. It just <laughs> hits me. It hits me so quick. I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom. This isn't going to be good. Yeah, it was uh, the, the craft room bathroom was uh, inaccessible for a couple hours. <laughs> Don't go in there. Good. Yeah. Wait a Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's Wine News World. Uh, if you were tuning in today to hear anything about the Oilers, we apologize. They are terrible. And instead, we told stories from elementary school. Next Thursday will be different. I, can, I feel, well, we have only one, two, three games. How many games do we have? I couldn't even predict what Thursdays is going to be about this year. next Thursday. I couldn't no, well, we got a couple of Oiler games in the way. Oh, I know. But if it goes poorly, we'll be in here telling, like. Well, how many games? They got three games. Does anyone oh, think I can speak games. German? Games, yeah, there are games on Thursday. Including the outdoor game. So there's two outdoor games. Game. There's a game tonight and there's a game on Saturday. Sunday. How many did they win? Half. I th- they better win on Sunday. I'm no mathematician, but you can't have One of three? three. Can. No, no. The third game is on Thursday night, so technically oh, we do this. You, so it's only you. actually two. Okay. One, one, and one. Okay, okay. So that's One and OT. We'll win the outdoor game. Yeah. We'll lose again next Thursday. OT tonight. Does 97 mm. play on OT Sunday? Night. Yes. Yes. I was going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. We'll see you next week. This episode of Wanya's World is brought to you by Oodle Noodle. We got locations all around Edmonton. We got a location in Airdrie. We got one location in Calgary and one more coming. Beacon Heights. OodleNoodle.ca. Deliciousness. Download episodes of Wanya's World at Apple Podcasts or on Spotify.